What is the most powerful asset that money can buy? Well, for many of the uber wealthy, that answer is easy, a passport. Until today, those with a lot of money have had the ability to buy so-called golden passports, which allow them to purchase citizenship through investment programs. Now, the formula is simple. If you invest a certain amount of money in a country, like buy real estate, for example, you get citizenship in exchange. And some countries even allow you to purchase golden visas, which provide temporary residence permits in exchange for investment. Well, now for the first time ever, Americans are applying for golden passports and visas more than any other nationality. And the question is, why and where are they applying? Well, joining us now is Jeff Opdyke. He's a contributing editor at International Living Magazine and Chris Willis, the co-founder of Latitude Residency and Citizenship. So Jeff, I'd like to turn to you first. Why are so many more Americans applying for golden passports and visas? I mean, what is causing this trend? Just look at America. I mean, it's a country that is uh, sort of devolving right in front of us. Uh, it's been going on for the last, I would argue, the last decade or so. Um, and you have a lot of Americans who simply want a greater peace of mind. So they're looking for sort of their plan B. Where am I going to go if things really do fall apart in the U.S.? And they're looking for passports. They're also looking for, you know, sort of investment opportunities and you know, in other countries, because America has become a particularly paternalistic society, at least on the governmental level, in terms of where you can put your money to work. Just look at the Foreign Account Tax Compliance Act that tracks you all over the world. Um, and it limits what Americans can do in many countries. So in turn, Americans are looking for passports that open up the world to them in terms for investments. Now, Chris, I'd like to turn to you. Where do most Americans apply? What are the most popular destinations today? No, certainly Portugal has been very popular, but that's uh, very topical now with some recent announcements coming out of there. And, you know, to, to Jeff's earlier point, one of the biggest things that happened in the U.S. was the travel ban during the COVID pandemic, because that was a real life example of it didn't matter who you were, or how wealthy you were. If you only had a U.S. passport, you couldn't travel. So the need for having that second citizenship became became critical and people realized they weren't prepared. So the Caribbean is extremely popular uh, for that purpose, because it does allow for the acquisition of a second citizenship in a relatively quick time, three or four months, you know, with investments relatively low compared to some of the European options, you know, which started the Caribbean programs will start at 100,000 US. So, you know, Portugal, Malta is also extremely popular um, because it's sort of a hybrid between the two where you can get your second citizenship in Malta in about 18 months, but it's going to cost you a lot more than what you would uh, have to pay, let's say, for Portugal or Greece or Spain. Now, Jeff, countries like Portugal and Ireland, uh, you know, of course, our guest just mentioned uh, Portugal, they've shuttered their golden visa programs. Why is that the case? And, and they're not the only ones, right? Um, there's some that are shuttering. There's some that are that are opening up. Uh, Montenegro is opening up, for example. Um, they're shuttering in places like Ireland and Portugal because they have been so successful. Um, you know, Portugal has drawn in a just a ton of America, just a ton of expats in general who are looking for a Portuguese uh, passport. In fact. You know, they, they, you know, they're going to shut it down, but prior to shutting it down, they actually walled off a great large amount of the country in terms of like Port, uh, Porto, uh, Lisbon, the entire Algarve for the most part, which means you could not, you know, couldn't qualify for a golden visa there because it becomes so popular. Um, and now they're just saying, you know what, you know, this has been such a great success, but we just can't keep doing this anymore because it's jacking up prices in, in some of these places, particularly in Lisbon. Now, Chris, I'd like to turn back to you. You kind of mentioned how much it costs to invest in, in a golden passport in certain countries. Talk to us about the range. I mean, what kind of money are we talking about here if, if you want to buy citizenship or residency in different countries? Do you have to be extremely, well, extremely wealthy? Uh, you don't have to be, but for without a doubt, it is reserved for your high net worth clients, especially when you look at jurisdictions like Malta, which, you know, is going to cost you the best part of a million euro, you know, to be able to qualify for economic citizenship there. But it comes down to the, the benefit. You know, you are acquiring European Union citizenship in a space of about 18 months, of course, subject to all the due diligence requirements uh, and background checks. But it's uh, that's the higher end of the uh, of the spectrum. You've got to also understand there's a difference between residency and citizenship. So you 
touched on this earlier, residency gives you the permission to reside in a country for a period of time, whereas citizenship is, is for life and you're, gives you the privilege of holding a passport. So the Caribbean programs, as I mentioned, started 100,000 US um, and the European residence programs, for example, in Spain and Greece are currently at 500,000 euro. Uh, Portugal was very attractive because it started at 280,000 euro. So it was very, uh, very attractive from a price point of view. The daytime requirements were relatively minimal and it gave a pathway to eventual citizenship if you continue to meet the, meet, meet the criteria. Mm -hmm. But uh, yeah, unfortunately, with all these changes coming on, uh, there's a very small window before uh, you know the program is going to close. We're just waiting on public consultations and see if there's any type of uh, adjustments uh, to the announcements from the Portuguese right. government. All right. So final question here, Jeff, you know, what do you think this, say, this says essentially about how our world functions? I mean, in your opinion, is this trend going to change in the coming years or simply ramp up? I think it's going to ramp up because the world is an increasingly dangerous place. And, you know, you look at what's going on with Ukraine and Russia, for example. I mean, there's a, there are two nationalities right there that want out of those passports and they want a, an EU passport to give them greater, greater travel free, uh, abilities. So I think, you know, when you look across the world today, it's clear that people want peace of mind and they realize that, you know, money's not everything. At some point, you need a place to go. And if the passport you own is in a country that is problematic, it doesn't really help you to have all the money in the world. So people want passports mm -hmm. so they have an open door somewhere else. All right. Well, I'd like to thank both of you, both Jeff and Chris, for joining us. Really fascinating, obviously, that, you know, there even is a, a door open to potentially purchasing citizenship. The question is who will ultimately be able to afford it? All right.